In 1983, OSHA created the Hazard Communication Standard, which gives you the right to know about any potentially hazardous materials or hazmats that you could encounter on the job. This HAZCOM standard also ensures that you will have the information and training that you need to handle hazmats safely. One of the main sources of information about hazmats are GHS safety data sheets. In this program, we'll discuss the types of information that safety data sheets contain, how they present that information, and how you can use them to work safely with hazmats. The more you know about a hazardous material, the more safely you can work with it. Information you should be aware of includes what a material is and what its hazards are, what procedures you should follow in handling and storing it, and what you should do if there's an emergency involving the material. You can get all this information and more from Safety Data Sheets, SDSs. Under OSHA's Hazard Communication Standard, hazmat producers and distributors are required to provide safety data sheets for each of their products. On job sites where there are hazardous materials, their SDSs should be kept in a central location for easy reference. The information that safety data sheets contain and the way they present that information is done according to the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals. This system, called GHS for short, was established by the United Nations to help people anywhere in the world get accurate information about hazardous materials regardless of what language they speak. It accomplishes this by standardizing how materials are classified, how their hazards and safety precautions are described, and how those facts are conveyed, and using pictograms to provide easily recognizable indicators of the hazards. GHS safety data sheets organize hazmat information about a material into 16 numbered sections, which always appear in the same order. Data that's likely to be needed in a hurry, such as a material's name, composition, hazards, safety precautions, and emergency procedures, is presented in the first six sections. Information on safe handling and storage procedures is located in the middle of the SDS followed by more specialized technical information toward the end. All of the data in GHS safety data sheets is presented using clear, non-technical language and standard phrasing. So it's easy for people who work with hazmats to get the information they need when they need it. able to get the information you need about the hazmats you work with is not just a matter of convenience. It can be vital to preventing accidents, injuries, and even fatalities, not only in your workplace, but in the surrounding community as well. So GHS safety data sheets follow a first things first approach to presenting hazmat information, making it easy to find and use even when you're in a hurry. The first three sections of an SCS answer the questions, what is this material and what are its hazards? Section one is product identification. This includes a chemical's official name, which GHS calls the product identifier, as well as any other chemical or trade names by which the substance is known. It gives the name and contact information of the company that supplied the material and also includes a 24-hour emergency telephone number. Section 2, Hazard Identification, provides information on a material's hazards, including its pictogram, its hazard classification, such as flammable solid, self-reactive substance, or gas under pressure, its hazard statement, such as heating may cause fire, harmful if inhaled, and may cause cancer, and its signal word, which will be either warning or danger, depending on how hazardous the substance is. This section also describes safety precautions that should be used with the material such as keep away from heat, do not breathe vapor, and wear protective gloves. 
As you can see, one objective of the GHS systems is to make hazmat information as user-friendly as possible by presenting it in plain language. The third section of a GHS safety data sheet provides technical details about a material's composition, including information about any other chemicals that it contains. This can be particularly important when a substance is a mixture of other ingredients. Section 3 also includes the material's common name and synonyms, its chemical abstract service, CAS number, and any other unique identifiers. Even when we do our best to handle hazardous materials carefully, wearing appropriate protective equipment and following safe practices, it's still possible for things to go wrong. Accidents happen, and we need to be prepared for them. So sections four, five, and six of GHS safety data sheets contain information on how to handle different types of hazmat emergencies. For example, if someone has been exposed to a hazardous material, you should turn to Section 4 for information on first aid measures. It is organized according to how the victim was exposed, from inhaling the substance, swallowing it, or through skin contact. This section will include instructions such as provide artificial respiration, do not induce vomiting, rinse skin gently using soap and water for 15 to 20 minutes. It will also tell you whether the victim will require emergency medical assistance. If a hazmat is involved in a fire, Section 5 of its SDS provides detailed information on the firefighting measures that should be used with it. This includes what extinguishing agents are appropriate for the substance and which are not. Information is also included regarding any new hazards that the material can create when it burns, such as toxic smoke. Lastly, Section 5 describes the precautions, procedures, and protective equipment that professional firefighters should use when extinguishing a fire that involves the hazmat. Accidental release measures are what is addressed in Section 6 of a GHS safety data sheet. In addition to emergency procedures and the safety precautions that should be taken in the event of a spill or leak, this section describes the methods, materials, and equipment that should be used to contain and clean up the substance. Instructions in this section include things such as ventilate the area, wear protective eyewear, gloves, and clothing, and dam and absorb spillage with sand, earth, or other non-combustible material. To provide easy access to the data you need most urgently, GHS safety data sheets present hazmat information in priority order. So the first six sections of an SDS tell you what you'll want to know in a crisis when every second counts. But the information in SDS sections 7 through 10 is important too because it describes the safe handling practices that can prevent hazmat emergencies. Section 7, for example, is titled Handling and Storage and includes the precautions that you should take when working with a substance, as well as the conditions that it requires to be stored safely. This section can include instructions such as avoid contact with skin, eyes and clothing, keep away from ignition sources, store in a cool location, and keep away from combustible material. Section 8, Exposure Controls and Personal Protection, provides details about engineering controls and personal protective equipment, PPE, that should be used with a material. Engineering controls are mechanical safety devices that are incorporated into a facility to help prevent hazmat exposure. They can include things like ventilation systems, gas detectors, eye wash stations, and safety showers. Rubber gloves, goggles, face shields, aprons, and a variety of respirators might be listed as required PPE. Section 8 of an SDS also specifies how much exposure to a material is safe and how much is too much. These benchmarks are known as Permissible Exposure Limits, PELs, and Threshold Limit Values, TLVs. Section 9 of an SDS lists a material's physical and chemical properties. 
Some of this information, such as what the substance looks and smells like, can help employees who don't typically work with the material tell whether an accidental release has occurred. Other data, such as the temperatures at which a material melts or boils and its flashpoint, can assist safety specialists in creating the controls and procedures that allow employees to work with the substance safely. Section 10 of an SDS contains information on a material's stability and reactivity. This data can be very important in ensuring that the material is handled safely. Substances that are unstable or highly reactive may explode or undergo uncontrolled chemical reactions under certain conditions or when they are combined with other incompatible chemicals. Most people who use GHS safety data sheets want user-friendly hazmat information that's presented in clear, non-technical language. But other SDS users, including supervisors, environmental managers, and industrial hygienists, need to know specific technical details. Many of these can be found in sections 11 through 16 of an SDS. For instance, Section 11, Toxicological Information, focuses on the adverse effects that a hazardous substance can have on living things. This data includes how toxic a substance is, how it can get into the body, the symptoms of exposure, and the effects that it can have. Section 12, Ecological Information, discusses the environmental impact a chemical can have after a spill or leak. It describes how the material behaves when it is released into the earth, air, and water, how long it can remain in these elements, and what effects it can have on plants, wildlife, and other aspects of the environment. Section 13, Disposal Considerations, explains how a material can affect the spill cleanup process, such as needing to use non-sparking tools and precautions that should be taken when disposing of it. Section 14, Transport Information, provides data that is required when a material is being transported, including its proper name, UN number, hazard categories, and safety precautions. Section 15, Regulatory Information, lists any safety, health, and environmental regulations that apply to a product that have not been listed anywhere else on the SDS. And Section 16, Other Information, contains data about a substance that doesn't belong in any of the previous sections, as well as specific information on how and when the SDS itself was prepared and revised. The more you know about the hazardous materials that exist on your job sites, the more safely you can work with them. GHS safety data sheets are an important source of this vital information. They help you find out what you need to know, when you need to know it. Let's review. OSHA's Hazard Communication Standard requires hazmat suppliers to provide safety data sheets with each of their products. Safety data sheets contain information on a material's identity, its hazards, the safety precautions that should be followed when handling and storing it, and how to respond in case of an emergency. To make SDS data easy to find and use, it follows organizational guidelines established by the UN's globally harmonized system, GHS. The GHS system standardizes and summarizes hazmat information, presenting it in plain language in priority order. Now that you understand how you can use GHS safety data sheets to find the information you need about hazmats, you can help keep yourself, your coworkers, your job site, and your community safe from hazardous materials every day.